All right. Um, with that said, let's move on to uh, Avatar The Way of Water. Now, this is uh, very fresh on my mind. Um, I just I just saw Avatar The Way of Water. So, again, very, very fresh on my mind. But um, um very excited to talk about it because I saw the first Avatar. I did not see it in theaters. So I didn't have that experience that everyone else had of, oh, this is, you know, mind-blowing CGI. And then this is one of the greatest movies visually ever, ever made, all that kind of stuff. I did not have that experience. Um, but I did enjoy the first Avatar. I saw it much later than its actual release date. And so the CGI didn't blow me away. I was also watching it on a much smaller screen, obviously, and all that kind of stuff. But again, the CGI is just not... You know, it's not as impressive now, which is fair because it came out, what, 13 years ago? Um, so the first Avatar, though I enjoyed, I thought it had really interesting themes. I thought the story was a little cliche in a lot of parts, like the the idea of, you know, a, like like a, a group of people attacking another group of people, and then one person falls in love with the, other, with, with the person of the other group and then defects and joins the other group, and then they fight and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's you know, it's not the most original of story concepts. Let's be fair. Uh, let's be frank. Um, but again, I think it worked well because of the world building that James Cameron did with Pandora. And I think that he was very successful in, in setting out to make just this really immersive new world of Pandora. So um, in that regard, I think that it is very, um, very successful. Uh, the first Avatar, at least in my opinion. Now, the second Avatar film, obviously James Cameron has said he's he already shot, I believe, three, maybe even four um, and at least, at the very least, he's written four and five. I, I do believe he shot three back to back with two. I don't remember if he shot four as well, which is crazy. Um, but again, the first Avatar is the highest grossing film of all time. It's almost made three billion dollars. If if not, it already has made three billion dollars with all of its re-releases. Um, this film has already made almost a billion dollars by the time I'm recording this video. It will hit a billion dollars very soon. Um, these movies make money, you know. Um, these movies make money. But also, these movies are expensive, and I, I, if I, if I've heard correctly, the second Avatar movie cost four hundred million dollars to make. So, um, again, these movies make money, but they're also very expensive. And um, just cutting to the chase right away, this this first portion will be non-spoiler, and then I'll talk about a couple spoiler things at the end uh, of this of this segment. But just talking about non-spoiler first, um, you can tell where every single cent of that four hundred million or whatever that number actually is you can tell where it went because um, this film is gorgeous. This film is one of the best visual experiences that I've ever had in a theater, um, if not the single best. And I, I've seen Top Gun Maverick in the theaters a couple times. I saw 1917, you know, I saw whatever else there is to say, you know, of the past couple years, a visual spectacle. But I mean, this is, this is just leaps and bounds. I saw this film also in it wasn't IMAX, but it was it was like XD or something. It was it was one of the biggest theater screens I've ever I've ever seen, and I saw it in 3D, which I never see 3D um, because 3D it just to me is, is doesn't do anything. But um, all the critics were saying if this if there is a film to see in 3D, it's this one. So I thought I'll give it a chance. And yeah, I mean, not every single frame of this film, um, you know, needed the 3D. Um, but again, I, I think that it, the 3d really popped a lot more and like, like a lot more than it did in any other film. So I'm really glad that I, I did get to see it in 3d as well. Um, again, the water sets are just incredible. They're beautiful to look at the, the, the Navi, uh, I mean, compared to 2009, it's avatar, I just look incredible. Um, there are still a couple scenes where I kind of went, yeah, it looks a little video game-ish, but again, like, for, the, like, the majority of this film, they look like real creatures, and that's crazy, um, because there's a lot of them. There, it's, it's almost all blue people in this movie, you know, and that's, that's really a testament to, to James Cameron and the visual teams working on this film, um, and so I'm, I'm really happy about that. So again, I mean, if you watch this movie, for no other reason, just for the visuals, it is a long film. It is three hours and 12 minutes, I think. So uh, if you need to go to the bathroom, you know, I don't think anyone will blame you because it's three hours and 12 minutes. But if you watch this movie for no other reason than the visuals, I think that that is a perfectly valid reason because this film is a visual masterpiece. Um, I imagine that this is sort of the, the what people were saying when they saw 2009's Avatar for the first time, I think that that, you know, this kind of feeling of, wow, like, well, that is just incredible, um, I think is very similar to what uh, what we just saw. Now, 
to be fair, um, because the next Avatar will come out in 2024 and then 2025 and 2027. Um, you know, it's it's hard because I'm going to transition now into not necessarily the negatives, although the more negative part of this review, but, um, you know, 2009's Avatar and 2022's Avatar The Way of Water, obviously we're 13 years apart and uh, they had time to really perfect a lot of the visual things that they wanted to really go for here. And um, you can tell, right? You can tell the Navi look just so much more human and so much more uh, realistic and photorealistic and all that kind of stuff between the 13 years. The problem is that now, because you filmed two and three back to back, and be, I'm going to assume, I, I could be wrong, but I, I'm 90% sure that I heard that. Anyways, uh, you're, because you're releasing these films so close together, um, I'm sure that Avatar 3's visuals are going to be incredible, and I'm sure that Avatar 4's, 4's visuals are going to be incredible, but it's not going to be the same leap as from Avatar 1 and 2. And the reason that I bring that up is because I think that the story for Avatar 2 is good, but it is good only good enough. I think that if you see the story of Avatar 2, you're going to be able to find several weaknesses in the plot. If you if you look for them, you're going to see some generic uh, tropes that are used in, in the second Avatar film. Um, and, you're, and really, the story and the characters are not the strongest part of Avatar 2. I think that some of the characters are very compelling, and I think that there's, there's an effort here to really develop some of the characters um, and their relationships. And I think that by the end of the film, you do care more about some of the characters that you you know you, you may not have may not have invested in before um but again it's not really what this film was trying to do at least i think because the film is really just a visual vessel right it's a, it's a vehicle for the visual effects i think and i know that cameron you know probably wants to tell a really great story and, and i'm sure he does but i think that the story is about as good as the first movies and i think that the first movie story is good but again it's it's just fun it's a fun story that probably goes on for way too long. I think that you could have cut about 30 minutes off of Avatar The Way of Water, but fine, you know, it's three hours and, and 10 minutes, and, and if you want it to be that that long, then fine. Um, but again, I think that um, you're not coming into Avatar 2 really for the characters or really for the story, uh, which are, again, good enough. Uh, good enough for the, the, the visual vessel that is Avatar The Way of Water. Um, I think that obviously you have returning characters like Jake Sully and Natiri. Um, aside from that, I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to give anything away in case you haven't seen the trailers or anything like that. Um, or, or you just don't want to know. Um, but again, I think that, I think Cameron has this idea that he's making some sort of groundbreaking story. And while he is making a groundbreaking film and many, many, uh, uh, in, in many senses of that, that phrase, I just don't see... A lot of new in the characters that he's developing. I think that there are a lot of tropes that are used that are very tried and true. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm left wondering that if you take the visuals aside, and for this film, the visuals were more than enough, but I'm, I'm thinking about Avatar 3, I'm thinking about Avatar 4, and I'm wondering, you know, take the visuals out, what are you left with? And what you're left with, I think, in this film is just a, just a good story that's very, very, very long. Um, with some decent character development. It's nothing amazing, in my opinion. Um, there's some good scenes. There are some very good scenes um, between the characters. And, and I think that the acting, especially Sam Worthington as Jake Sully, once again, is very good. Um, but again, I think it's really the visuals that you're going to be left um, in awe of as, as you walk into the theater. You're Returning to Pandora and, and seeing this whole other side of it with the water is truly truly incredible so those are my thoughts on avatar the way of water again you know i would highly recommend seeing it uh see it on a big screen see it on as big of a screen as you can and enjoy it enjoy it for what it is um transitioning very quickly into some spoilers this is just a very very quick uh spoiler segment it's i'm not going to talk about too too much from the film so if you haven't seen the film uh or sorry if you have seen the film um you know i'll just talk about a couple quick points and if you haven't seen the film spoiler alert um in three two one, um, I think that there are, look, I think that the family element of this film is what it is banking on, obviously, like the family is our fortress kind of thing. I I think that I do care about the family. I do care about Jake Sully's family, but I just don't think I, I was invested as much as I think the film wanted me to be. And especially when the oldest son um, 
is this Nateyam, I think is his name. I could totally be wrong about that. Um, when he dies, I think that the film maybe it expected me to care a little bit more than I actually did because um, that was really the one one family member that wasn't given any development. So maybe the film really didn't want me to care about his death and maybe it was really more just for the Sully family. It might That might very well be it. Um, but again, I mean, you know, the other supporting characters from the Water Village, I think, are fine. I think that bringing back Stephen Lang as the colonel is a little questionable because I just don't quite care that much about him. And he's looks like he's going to be the villain, from what I read, for the next three Avatar films. So, I, great, I guess. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, there's some there's some things being set up here for the third Avatar film, like with uh, Ki- Kiri, uh, Sigourney Weaver's uh, character, one of the adopted daughter, um, who was born from Sigourney Weaver's avatar. It's very confusing. Obviously you have, uh, Stephen Lang's character being preserved, being kept alive. And then you also have, um, you also have that interesting subplot with, uh, mining the brain material from the big whale character, um, or the, the whale species and, and de-aging and immortality that might come into play. Maybe again, there. When when I'm looking at Avatar Avatar: The Way of Water, I, I'm I'm thinking about the visuals, I'm thinking about the experience. You know, I really truthfully, I'd watch these films, I'd watch many more sequels just to see what James Cameron can do visually, and push the boundaries. But I'm not really not going to watch these movies, uh, expecting you know groundbreaking stories and things like that. I just I think that this is a class of film on its own, and I think that that's a good thing. Um, I'm not you know disparaging James Cameron in that way. I think that this is like high, one of the best theater experiences I've had in, in quite a while, obviously Top Gun Maverick notwithstanding. Um, and I think that it's well worth a watch. Um, I'm, I'm excited for Avatar 3. Not again, not because of the characters necessarily, just because I'm, I know it's going to be an experience. And uh, I think that's what theaters are for, you know? Um, so I'm very happy about that.